Shalom Rastafari. This is connected with the Sita Nagesh, or the Law of Kings, the Ethiopic Law of Kings, or we can call it Ethiopic Canon Law, which is the Sita Nagesh. And you might um, know the book by this particular cover right here. And this is a little mock-up right here, but let's bring it down so you can see. Okay, okay, fits in the gas. It fits in the gas right there. And that is according to the the publication by Kadamawi Haile Selassie, by the King of Kings, by His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I. So this particular book right here is the one that um, I think Head Start, is it Head Start Books or Frontline? Who is Head Start and Frontline? They have made this particular um, edition possible. Ethiopian, under Ethiopia, Ancient Law, and it's under Canon Law. That was a very good um, observation, Canon Law. You probably heard a lot about Canon Law and the whole so called New World Order. You understand the whole thing about the New World Order. Yes, we're in a time of a New World Order, but once again, we remind the brothers and sisters that this is a dispensation. This is a, this is a prophetic time we're living in. And don't get caught up in all the hype of um, the New World Order as though it belongs to the European. Mm -mm. It should be very clear that this New World, I mean, there, there is... Um, Signs in heaven, there's signs in earth, there's signs in the sea, there's signs among men and people, and, and nation against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. All of this is the word of Yeshua HaMoshiach. All of this is the word of, of Christ, the word of God being manifested to us. But we need to know our ancient foundations. It's just what the... Um, constitution of the Ethiopian World Federation reminds us of, and this is our commonwealth. So all Ethiopian Hebrews, all black people who know themselves or are reclaiming their birthright and their identity as Ethiopians should know and should be involved in an awareness, gain an awareness of the Ethiopian World Federation. Now presently, um, we ourselves are members, but not we are not elected or, um, how can we say, elected by any particular group of the what we call the two-headed monster because there's a lot of different individuals who are doing their own thing but who are not securing justice for us and are not maintaining the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage. They are not disseminating, that is, sowing the seed of our ancient Ethiopian culture among the members, and they are not even publicizing to the black people this very important part of our divine heritage, Yosen and vis-a-vis -vis the land grant and all that connection. As we look at this global, as we look at a global and increasing global so-called economy, and we see the economic crisis among the Western and the European and even the American um, nation should show us that we are in a time of a changing of the God, a, a new world order. But the new world order, the true new world order, belongs to the King of Kings and his Christ, according to prophecy. And if you know the book of Revelation, you know that all the kingdoms, in that verse which says all the kingdoms have become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, let's get that prophetic word for you, because we need to be able to document this, and we need to be able to reference this. So this is to reorientate ourselves and not to become disorientated with all that we're hearing. Some of the information about the New World Order is true. Some of the information is not. You know, there's a lot of confusion, and a lot of it is meant to keep folks in a frozen psychological state of what can they do about it. What can they, like there's nothing they can do about it. That's part of the conspiracy. The New World Order in, in, in record, the so-called New World Order that we're living in, is the Old World Order compared to the New World Order that is coming into effect. And this is why we see the Arab world uh, rising up. This is why we see the Asians and China making moves. 
This is why we see even South America and, and other peoples and groups making moves. But the African so-called black folks are like in a state of inertia, are, are lawless. And this is why this document, the law of the kings, which is our Ethiopic canon law. You know, there's some who speculate that where we're, where we're going is that Rome or the Pope is going to impose canon law globally. That's very interesting. And it seems as though with the breakdown in government and democracy and, 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 and what's going on among so many nations, that is probably what they're going to bring into effect. So this knowledge of canon law, of our Ethiopic canon law, the Fitta Negev, is very, very important. Here's a documentation, Revelation 11 and 15. It's when the seventh trumpet is blown, the seventh angel sounds, and there was great voices in the heavens, in the heavens, right, in heaven, saying the kingdoms of this world, of this seclorum, nouveau ordo seclorum, of this seclorum, the secular or seclorum means the world, of this seclorum or world all become the kingdoms, they become the kingdoms or governments, or dominions, in other words, of our Lord, of Adonenu, Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, right, it says of our Lord, but in that context it's of Yahweh, God the Father there, of our Lord, right, and his Christ, Christ in his kingly character, and he shall reign forever and ever. So it's important that we understand this. This is the verse, verse 15, Revelation chapter 11. If we go to verse 14 in Revelation chapter 11, it says the second woe was passed, World War II, the establishment of League of Nations and the very important role that the King of Kings, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, um, has played in that process. Many folks say, oh, he was um, down with the so-called New World Order. You hear, you hear um, one saying that Haile Selassie was down with the New World Order. But then it seems that according to the Bible, God in some sense is down with it too. He says it is his will to assemble, to gather the nations together. And so as we connect this prophetic picture, we can see that Ethiopia's role um, after that second woe and with the establishment of the United Nations being that first victim, you know what I'm saying, of, of, of genocide, that the Ethiopian Holocaust, that half of the story, that many of us as lost sheeple don't know of. You know, so now this affects everything in our economy. This affects our finances. This affects our families. This affects our futures. You understand? Know, because this affects our birthright. Remember, Esau, Esau sold his birthright, right, for something to eat. Let's understand that. A lot of Negroes, lost sheeple, have sold their birthright, you understand, know, for something to eat. But that runs out. And notice when Esau did that, Notice that Esau, having sold his birthright for something to eat, the only um, blessing that was given to Esau, right? And Esau, we can connect this with the Jews who call themselves Jews, all right? We can connect this with certain groups out there, whether ethnically or whether they operate under that mentality. That the only other blessing left to Esau was the blessing of the sword, right? And this is war. This is what we're seeing, what we're witnessing. It is war, right, and rumors of war, all right? So, so here's a good setup right here. You see this Illuminati? We, we, this is what we've been touching on, the Illuminati. The Illuminati were responsible for the creeping coup in Ethiopia, as well as a lot of careless Ethiopians and Iscariots at home and abroad. They were responsible for that. You understand, and we've gone into detail on that. We'll get into that um, overall. What we need to understand here is the half of the story that hasn't been told to us. So the second woe was passed, World War II. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Then when the seventh angel sounds, the seventh angel sounds and says that all these kingdoms and governments, all the nations, right, their, their rulerships are to become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, or of Jah, of Yah, if you please, and his Christ, Rastafari, his imperial majesty, I and I and I. You understand? But that can come to pass 
until we now work out our faith. So education is the key because we have to know within what order, within what order to work within. So this is why we're touching on the fits and the guests, the fits and the guests right here. Now let's bring up this part about evangel evangelization, evan angel evil angelization in in in, in um, Ethiopia and Africa. Now there's 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 much we have to say on this, but let's try to. Let's try to get into this. Okay, file recovery. Okay, some of these files here. We got to restart. You know these machines. Uh, they're very limited. Now here, here is the meaning of the term Catholic in history. Now this is from the Catholics in Ethiopia. Now this is a dossier from the third of May two thousand eight. Of, of Fides. Fides means faith. But interestingly enough, Feda, like in federation, comes from faith too. So federation is a faith-based thing. This is why we say that the cornerstone of building the Ethiopian World Federation or resurrecting it in spirit and in truth is the churchical cornerstone. That's why the preamble is written in that way. You understand to secure justice and to maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, of holy, true Ethiopia. Not the Ethiopia you see today, not the Ethiopia post um post so called uh, revolution but post great transgression, not the Ethiopia um post Armageddon nineteen seventy four. Not speaking about that Ethiopia. This we're in the interregnum right now. Interregnum is a period between um true rulership and, and, and true government. You understand we're living in the wilderness in a sense, the bad lands right now. You understand until we get our acts together out here in the wilderness of the Americas, right, and are able to, to, to be in our proper person spiritually. That means our God mind, born again, and in truth. That means legally and in the paperwork. We get rid of this false status, 13th and 14th Amendment person and these slave names, so forth and so on. But this article right here caught our attention, right? This article right here caught our attention, and let's see if we can clear this right here. And it's the Catholic Church in Ethiopia. Now, there's a long history of um, the Catholic Church, the invasions and the, the Jesuits and going back to the Portuguese in the 16th century and even other relations with the ancient Catholic or Catholic Church. And there's a black presence there that's been whitewashed. You see, so we say firebun the Pope, so forth and so on, yes. In other words, because we know that something has happened within the ancient papacy when we recognize that many of the, the early bishops of the church, including the, the true Petros, Peter, who was actually bishop of Antioch, you understand, in Turkey, and not the bishop of modern Rome, as people assume it or pretend it today, but that's a whole other matter. Here it speaks about, this is under the meaning of the term Catholic in history. Now, they don't really tell you the meaning of the term of Catholic in history in this article, but if you look at the ancient creed, what we know as the Apostolic Creed, you will see where it says, and overall, the one holy church, uh, the one church, that overall, the sense of overall, kataholos, it was a phrase to say that, and, and over everything is the church for true Christians. Over everything is the church. They took that, 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 that the Greek part, kataholos, and this is where Catholic became the name for the church, and that's what has been used ever since in ignorance. One's not understanding. It means kahulum belai bamarinya, and above all, the beta christian, the aviata christiana. basically. That's what it's basically saying, that over everything that is in the seclorum is the church. Now, with the hostile takeover of the Catholic Church or the, the Roman Church by white supremacy and the whitewashing, all this has been flip mode. And this is one of the reasons why there's this ancient relationship with the Catholic Church or with the Roman Church in history, even with the Ethiopians and, and others. And then there's, there's this break. There's the break in the Council of Nicaea or Nicaea and the Council of Chalcedon or Chalcedon where the Oriental, the five Oriental churches, 
you know, when you look at Mary, Virgo, in the constellation, she's holding a branch, and the branch has five stars. So those five churches, you understand, separated themselves from this rising dragon, which was the so-called Holy Roman Catholic Church, which had already conducted a whitewash, and a, it had purged out all of the African black, black Hebrew, black Jewish reference, and it was total whitewash. And this is where we now get these these um the white mary and white jesus out front but the popes who know the truth in the back room they're worshiping the so-called black madonna the overstand and black child but that's just to give you a background on what catholic truly means in history you know saying kataholos look at the ancient creed in the greek and then look at it as it was translated into latin and then look at how the romans used that as a name for their particular church so when we say the Roman, there is a Roman church, but they called themselves that this church is above all other churches and use the whole Peter thing, you know, use the whole Peter thing, and now have descended to the pedophilia thing, all right? Anyway, when in the year 107, St. Ignatius of Antioch, notice Antioch, you see, I have to remember that Antioch in Turkey and Constantinople, Byzantium was, the, was also called Rome, it was called Rome. So there were two Roman capitals, and this is where the switch mode comes in. So St. Ignatius of 107, right, um, A.D., first used the word Catholic. He did so to express universality. No, he took the word kataholos out of the uh, ancient apostolic creed or apostolic constitution. You understand? You know, that what we believe, that part where it says we believe or in the Latin me credo, me credo. In other words, I believe or we believe, right? So he used that word. Now, they're not giving you the background history here, and they often don't. But it says nearly 2,000 years, the word Catholic. See how they do it? They say Ignatius connects St. Ignatius with this word in Antioch, not in Rome, Italy but in Antioch, Constantinople, or modern Turkey, which is part of the Hittite territory and the Ottoman, for those who want to connect the historical idea. You know, the historical idea is very, very interesting, what's really going on. And we can also see the, the two seeds, you know what I'm saying, the righteous and the wicked, and also the whole black and white thing going on. But now they just flip mode 2,000 years later, the word Catholic, while still keeping the sense that it was used by St. Ignatius. They make Ignatius the fall guy, right, in the words, in this sort of um, argument they make, has been more precisely defined to avoid historical misunderstandings. Now, notice right here, this is their text. It says published. Published is just hanging out there. They say published, the catechism of the Catholic Church describes Catholicity, Catholicity, the Catholic city, basically, or universality. See, the word kataholos in the Greek, which was where it was originally, means, and above all, the... Holy Church or the Christian Church. That's what it was meaning, above all, the Christian Church. You know, so this is very important, and you can see that they jump over 2,000 years. Could we get in and they admit here, you understand, roundaboutly, that there are um, some his, something in the history that leads them to misunderstandings that they will prefer not to talk about. That's basically what they're saying. Yovis, because the word mean kataholos mean above all, and when this word was now brought into Latin, they instead of translating it above all, kahulum belai or kataholos, they translated it as Catholic implied to mean universality in the Latin translation. This is why there were so many disputes among ancient older churches with the rising um, beast or the, or the Catholic church or mystery Babylon because of these mistranslations and even the relationship of Ethiopia with um, Rome and the wars, Battle of Ottawa and others, was based on a lot of misunderstandings and mistranslations. Notice that. That's, that's a, key, a key point right there. You understand? Because they use mischief in the law, as the Bible says. So they say it comprises three elements, according to them, profession of one faith received from the apostles, common celebration of divine worship, especially the sacraments, and apostolic succession through the sacrament of holy orders, um, confer CF number 815. 
Now, within the Ethiopian context, right, now they're saying this is one context, and now they're trying to put the Ethiopians in its own kind of context. However, it is worth noting the Fitta Neges, which is the law of kings. They said the Greek text was originally codified circa 870, the Arabic text circa 1238, and the Gutis text circa 1450. Well, Brothers and sisters, um, how could this be true if the Greek church did this and the, what about the Egyptian? The Egyptians got it from the Arabs, but then the Ethiopians were involved since Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. You see, Rome didn't become Christian. Even Paul, the, you know, Paul, Paul did not become um, Christian until the next chapter. You know, and in Ethiopia already was Hebraic, so it was already involved in this process. So what they try to do here is late date late dated. But notice, you don't see no Latin here, right? There's a, where, where did the Latin come in? They're still trying to figure out where they want to put it, right? Um, but it says, the fifth and the guest affirms, just as a patriarch has authority and power over those who are under him, so also the titular of Rome has power over other patriarchs because he is the chief, as was Peter, who had power over all Christian chiefs and communities of Christians in his capacity as vicar of Christ, our Lord, upon his people and his churches. So you can see what they're trying to do right here. And this is where, why a lot of even um, Ethiopian Christians who were weak in the real foundations of Gutters and their language and, and the and the Tawahido to Hymenot, you understand, um, have fallen for this particular argument. Because they said, look, in your fits and the guess, it says this right here. And notice what they say outside. It says, so Peter and his successors are officially recognized as being the head of Christ's church on earth. Now notice, Peter was the bishop of Antioch, and at the same time, um, Jacob or James was the bishop in Jerusalem, and there were others. Who was the head over all? Actually, it was the bishop of Jerusalem. You, you have to understand what has gone on here. You understand? So they try to say because of Peter and his successor, therefore, anybody who names the name of Christ according to the Pope, and this is where this whole canon law and the Sunday law as well, and persecuting those who observe the, the Shabbat or the Sendet, you understand, is really coming into play the persecution of the Christians that you no doubt should have heard about. And in some of the music video of some of your shit hop, I mean hip hop artists, they're trying to show you that, you know, in, in certain, in certain artistic and artistic ways. Right. So they're trying to say that Peter, because Peter is linked with Rome. Therefore the Pope is like Peter. And therefore Peter was running everybody. Peter wasn't running everybody. I mean, we know this very clearly. Yes, he is one of the leading, the leading ones after the resurrection, you understand, and ascension of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus Christos, or Jesus Christ. But he was not the only one. And, and the history of the church, you understand, the early history of the church will show you that. You understand, was he a main one in the, in the Acts of the Apostles in the early days? Yes. You understand, but now you could understand what they, what, what they are doing. You understand, by this wiggle room right here in ignorance. He says, those words belong to the long tradition of the church in Ethiopia, even if, they are not all, even if they have not always been put into practice, at least they have never been dismissed. You see, so they've been trying this ever since. And we're about to publish a new volume, Church History um, um, of Ethiopia by Michael Geddes. This is from 16... Right, this is from 1696. It's a very interesting document. You know, and this is when the Protestant Church or the Church of England and other churches were truly in that Protestant Reformation. You know, and the Protestant Reformation is also mentioned as one of the seven churches in Revelation. Because the seven churches in Revelation, they document, they document the um. They document the, the ages until Christ and his kingly character, the, 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 the various different ages. Each church is a particular age of church history. And then when we get to um, the Protestant Reformation, that is the Church of Sardis. The Church of Sardis, it, 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 it is the Protestant, the Protestant Reformation is that particular church known as the Church of Sardis that we find in Revelation chapter 3. 
So if you want to understand really the denominations of Christianity and how does it connect with the big picture, and did Christ know this? Did, did, did God not tell his people about it? He did in Revelation. But Revelation is so often misinterpreted by so many folks who don't know the Bible and, and who are not, not, not in-laws but are outlaws. So there's a lot of outlaw translation, interpretation, misinterpretations of the Bible that contribute to more confusion. But here we are reading about Sardis, which is the Protestant Reformation, whose works were not fulfilled. In other words, the Protestant, Protestantism in breaking from Rome and highlighting a lot of the grave flaws was very important, and, it, and it's mentioned in the scriptures as Revelation chapter 3 mentions the church of Sardis. But the key thing it mentions is that it works what, what were not fulfilled. This is why you see the Protestant Catholic, the Catholic church on the ecumenicalism and Protestantism. You see the Protestant church defending the Pope. And a lot of these preachers basically almost telling you and trying to get the people to, you know, bow to the Pope. You know what I'm saying? But, but it's also being done. In Ethiopia, as we just highlighted from this particular document here, evangelization in Ethiopia, and this particular excerpt right here where they tried to use the fit and the guess and say, well, by your own law, it says in your own law that you're to bow to the Pope and come under the see of Peter, which is the Pope. And they've been working so hard on this for so long. You understand for so long, and and this is all part of how how um, Antichrist and how Leviathan gets destroyed, where it all began in the Horn of Africa in Ethiopia. In other words, this is why they they're moving towards the Horn of Africa, and and the focus is is on that part of the world again, and Africom and all of that is all a part of the big picture. You understand? But if you know the scriptures and you see these news reports. You understand? It becomes kind of very exciting and interesting. You understand? Because then you really know that the word of Jah is true. So now here we go to this particular document here. Let's go to this document right here. I don't know how clear you can see this, whether we have to. Hopefully you can see this um, right here. Now this is, this is where they, they quote it from right here. This is the section. The patriarch in his power is like a father over his children. Now remember, each church, a patriarch basically, now over the patriarch means a father, in a sense, a bishop, like an overseer. You see, you have to understand that ecclesiastical-ism um, that we see especially in Rome and practice, this is, why, this is why the Ethiopian Oriental churches broke away, because they saw that it's going outside of the scope of the Bible. You understand? Well, we have one class is a priest and everybody else is a lay person. A lay person means an ignoramus. A lay person is an illiterate person. A lay person you don't give a Bible to. So when the Protestant Reformation rose up, you understand, with Martin Luther and, and Wycliffe and others, the real Protestant, the real King James Bible is the Wycliffe Bible, really. You know, he really suffered martyrdom, you understand, for trying to bring the word to people and saying, listen, it's not this, this popery. You're saying that popery is a sin against God's word and, and, and this whole f false, false um, ecclesiastical, because the ecclesiastical sense it divides the brotherhood. There's an equal brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? This is also one reason why Christ said, call no one father in that sense on earth. Yes, there are fathers, the ones are like fathers. You understand? And like mothers, in a sense, you know, like a, 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 a bishop of a church. He is supposed to be like the father and like the big brother, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But he is not. In other words, still God's word rules over all. But what they did was establish this structure. You understand? Know, take the Bible away and keep people in hocus pocusism and, and spookism. Right? So here it says, as a patriarch, right, has authority and power over those who are under him. This is a quote. So also titular of Rome has power over other churches, over all the patriarchs, because he is the chief, as was Peter, who had power over all Christian chiefs and the community of Christian men in his capacity as a vicar of Christ, our Lord, upon his people and his churches. Now, 
in the time of Petros, or Kepha, his Hebrew name Kepha, and, and his, 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 his Roman or Greek, Greek eyes, Roman name was Petros, right, Peter. He was the bishop of Antioch, or Antokia, you understand, in, in, in the scripture, Antioch, Antioch, which is in Turkey, you understand, which is what, what we know as Constantinople, which later on became Byzantine, which became the second Rome. I want you to understand that. Let's understand that what we see as the as the basilica or the basilica, or whatever like that in Rome and the Universal City and all of that, the Universal City. Imagine that. Uh -huh. You get it? Um, Universal City. All of that is 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 uh is uh is like in the Matrix where the um Mr. Smith he he started to learn things from Neo, and this is kind of what we see. There, you understand? It's it's, it's kind of like a um, it's 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 a hoax, basically. It's a big hoax. You understand? Because what does, in a sense, Ethiopia, in a sense, really need? You understand? From its fellow Christians, Romans, Catholics, or others, what do they need? But Christian brotherhood and love and fellowship in the word of Christ, the exact same thing that his majesty told the Pope upon his, his last visitation to the so-called um, um, universal city or the eternal city or to the, to the Pope, you know, I mean, we see the video and you can check out transcripts of that. And he reminded them, you understand, of living in the practice. You see, when this article that we brought up here, when they talk about the practice, right, when they talk about the practice right here, that Ethiopia, this is in Ethiopia. And so it says, so Peter and his successors down here are, are officially recognized as being the head of, of, the, of Christ's church on earth. Those words belong to the long tradition in the church in Ethiopia. Even if they have not always, here's, here's, here we go, even if they have not always been put into practice, at least they have never been dismissed. In other words, even though they have not bowed down to white supremacy and bowed down to the Pope and bowed down to the church across the, Mediter the Mediterranean, you understand, they still have it there. What they mean by practice is to bow to Rome. You understand? It's to bow to their whitewash and to bow to Mystery Babylon. That's basically what they mean. You know, there's a lot of folks in the church and Ethiopian Catholics who are more, you know, the ignorant lay people. You understand? They go along with the, the smiles and the, the kind gestures and, and the soft words and music. They, they can, they're kind of careless there. You understand? And some of them may be sincere, and God, God protects fools and little children, right? So he probably protects them because they really don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? But for I and I who know better, we know what this is all about right here. They're trying to say they haven't put it into practice. When His Majesty visited the Pope, you understand, in that video that we have and, and the stills, and we spoke about that previously, he reminded them, you understand, about practicing, you understand, the, the walk of Christ and in love and honesty and truth, not in the bloodshed, invasion, and destruction, and schism, that the that that, that the, the Catholic Church caused in Ethiopia from the fifteenth fifteen hundreds until the present time. You understand? So we have to know, you understand, you know, I mean there's some truth to this article here as well, but you have to also know the context. You know, what's really behind what they're putting out here. Since they're not going to the root first of all if you if you talk about the meaning of a term, shouldn't you go to the etymological root and the earliest uses of it. They're saying it's St. Ignatius. We say nay. It's actually part of the creed, the, the early apostolic creed, which most likely was in Aramaic and probably Coptic and then probably Greek, you, following that transmission, that transmission of it. But now let's go to this particular book here, and we have this in a PDF version. So when we read that there, you know how when you read something, you kind of like, not stunned, but you just don't want to say nothing just yet. You're just taking it all in. Like some of y'all may be taking this all in. You know but then in order to resolve, you know, resolve um, the, 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 the matter, you have to go study. You know what I'm saying? you got to find out what, what all of this is really and truly about. All right? So we're going to go to... Mm-hmm. 
we're going to go to now the the Ethiopic and the the Ethiopic of this document that was produced by Hala Selassie, right? And before we go any um, further, there's a part that we want to read from the Fitta Neges. So this is the cover, and this is this is the imperial. This is His Majesty, our Father's, our Father's seal. You know, they show you the Pope's thing. This is our Abba. This is our Father. You know what I'm saying? Our Father, who truly is in heaven. And, you know, he comes with a heavenly host. So they tell you about these UFOs. Don't worry about them. If you meet an alien or a UFO, you know what I'm saying? Ask them about Christ, about Yeshua, Black Lord and Savior. Is he a, you know, ask the aliens, are they, are they Christians? I mean, truly Christian. They recognize his humanity. And if they do, according to all, all those uh, accounts, if they, if they bring the doctrine, the teaching, of the King of Kings and His Christ, we can accept them. If they don't, you understand, then you have to recognize you're dealing with some rebellious angels, some demons, and recognize you've got power over them. Yeshua has given us power over them. But here on page XVIII, and let's just bring that up right here. We're about to put a lot of this. This is already online, but we're going to put it um, probably in a legal section. There needs to be a, a, a legal section. So we went to that. Let's go to the 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 preface and this preface was by um one named Alba um Paulo Sadua right and let's go right here and let's go to X um V I I X V I I um and that will be or actually I I I that would be eighteen in Roman numerals. Okay, this is uh okay we're at this is twenty six right here. A little bit further, just bear with I. And this is from um, the Fitta Neges. I would say get a copy of it. Um, we're going to publish um, some volumes of this, including including the Ethiopic and them hard translation, because we have to go to our original sources. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but right here, it is speaking of right here, um, the first printed edition. Let's get, the, let's get something that can serve as a pointer right now. Um, Right, it says right here the first printed edition of the Fitta Neges followed the first form. It was published by Ignazio Guidi in 1897. Keep that year in mind. So, a lot of activity was going on. There's a lot of activity. You understand? This is right around the same time as the, the, the Battle of Ad Adua. You understand? I mean, shortly after that particular time, around the same time as as the birth of His Majesty, the Son of Man, Lich Teferi, which is Revelation as well, right? Just before 1935, notice that 1935, an edition of the Fitta Neges in the didactic. Didactic mean um, an autodidact is self-taught. So in the teaching form, didactic, didacticos, it's another Greek word coming to English, didactic. The teaching form was printed under the auspices of His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I. Unfortunately, this edition was never offered to the public for sale in the pell-mell of the 1935 war, in the chaos, the pell-mell of the 1935 war. Now, I want you to understand we're speaking about Torah, right, as our basic foundation. Now, this would be like Torah is like we bar mitzvah as our elementary school. And this is where we really go to high school and the more collegiate level when we start to understand the law of kings, fit to neges. You understand, which is the, the crowning aspect. While the Torah is our basic faith-based foundation. I understand this. All right, so it says that in this particular time, right, that unfortunately this edition, right, the edition that was published under the auspices of his imperial majesty, what a, what, what a irony, what a, is this a coincidence that the edition was never offered to the public in the pell-mell of the 1935 war as well as the invasion, speaking of the fascist Romanist invasion. Look how, look how the Christian so-called brothers were treating us. Overstand what they're saying. They're saying that Ethiopia does not practice bowing to the Pope while Ethiopia is not under such a thing. Because the Antioch and the Peter that it was talking about is Constantinople. It's the Saint, what was it called? Saint Sophia. That church that they call, I think it was a mosque. Now it's a church. This new Pope, he went out to visit it some years ago up in Turkey. 
the, the Saint Sophia. It's talking about that Rome or Byzantium. You see, they use this confusion when there was two heads of the Roman Empire, right? So that was not printed. Remember the woe that Revelation chapter 11 speaks about? It says all copies printed but not yet bound. The copies were printed. They were burnt. Who do you think burnt them? The so-called Catholic, the Roman Catholic soldiers. They burnt them. Why they burnt this? If that document basically tells us you understand that well, we are supposed to submit to the, the seat of Rome, the Mender uh, Petros. You understand? And if that really is them, why would they burn this? Together with the printing press. And note that that's the printing press. His Imperial Majesty brought in that printing press, thus fulfilling Revelation 5, where it speaks about the seals. To unseal the seals means to print, to get it into print, to get it into circulation. So this is very important. This is a very important note that we want to bring to your attention right there. You understand that the fascists, the same Catholics, so you Ethiopians who are Catholic, you know, if that's what you choose, if that's what you choose. In fact, the original Catholics were both Ethiopian, you understand, and they were um, Catholic in that sense, Kataholos of that original church out of Antioch and out of that part of the world, but not out of Rome. You understand? It was not out of Rome. So let's go forward right here. So some fragments of this edition that contains these chapters here are kept at present in the National Library of Addis Ababa. In 1964, there was another edition of the Goodes text in the first form, in the first form, right? So there's at least two forms of this, and this was printed in Asmara, which is Etera Eritrea, right? Now, in 1966, in 1966, a photo offset edition of a didactic manuscript of the Fitta Neges was prepared by the Burhanana Salam, or the Light and Peace, Burhanana Light and Salam Peace printing press in Addis Ababa, or a new flower. Now, we want to show you this particular text that has now also been printed again and put back into circulation by the present um, Ethiopian church authorities. Right, and we're on page 11 of this particular, this is the second part, but we're going to put this together as well. This is the, the Gutters column right here, and this is the Amharic column. So now you remember that portion of the Fitta Neges that we showed you? that they quoted and everything, we said, you know what, we want to check this out for ourselves. You understand? We want to really find out if this is the truth for ourselves. It's on page 19. It's on page 19 of this particular document right here, the Fitta Neges, which is our Ethiopian canon law. So let's go over page 19 one more time. Page 19, the part in page 19 says right here that the patriarch in his power, in his authority, his sultan, Bala Sultan, is like a father. And say he is our father, our father who art in heaven. But the patriarch or the bishop is like a father over his children in the Lord, in our black Lord and Savior Yeshua. As a patriarch has authority and power over those who are under him, so also the titular the titular of Rome has power over all of the patriarchs because he is the chief, as was Peter, who had power over all Christian chiefs and the community of the Christian men. This is a little bit exaggerated here because he had power over all of those who were in Antioch, where they first were called Christian. You know what I'm saying? And when they first were called Christian, it was a nickname. You know what I'm saying? There was a nickname, like saying Rastas or Dreads, in a sense. It was like a kind of a nickname. It was not really a full name, Christianoi, like the Caesaranoi or the Kaiseranos. That means those of the household of, of Caesar. You know, the, the Christianoi are those of the house of Christ. That's where they first got that name in Antioch that you have in your Bible. Not in Rome. You know what I'm saying? Not in, not in Rome, Italy. You understand? But the so-called New Rome or Byzantium or modern Turkey today. What's modern Turkey? That part of the world which is so hot. There's so much interesting interconnection when you see the whole whole link. 
You know what I'm saying? They'll explain a lot of things to you, even why somebody like Kim Kardashian, those kind of white folks, they like black people because of the ancient church link. You know, there's an ancient link between the Armenian church. They were persecuted, too, because they wouldn't bow to the pope, just like the Ethiopian church. Everyone who wouldn't bow to the pope, what kind of Christian love did they show? You know what I'm saying? They showed it in, the, in, in using the blessing of Esau, the sword, because that shows you exactly who they are. So the fruit, you know what I'm saying, we judge a tree by its fruit. And do we still have that open here? Do we already move that as well? Who's in the yota? the iota for a moment, and we came across something that was uh, very interesting here. Let's see if we can bring this up. So it's saying that a patriarch who's like a father, he's like a father. The church, in a sense, is the mother, the entire church as a, as a, as a corporate entity. You know what I'm saying? The church is our mother. You know what I'm saying? The church is that maternal aspect that helps the newborn, that helps the new Christian, you know, to be born again as a little child and to grow up. But you see, they don't want you to grow up. You know what I'm saying? They want to, they, they want to lord, you know what I'm saying, lord their position over you. So here we go right here. Here we go right here, which is from the Yota, the Amharic um, um, software for the, for the Bible that uses the uh, authorized text of his imperial majesty. You can see where it says right here. This is, um, I think this is Matthew. This is, uh, um, is it Mateos? Are we in Mateos? Let's see which, which Wengel. Are we in Mateos Wengel. Um, we're in chapter, chapter um, 7, 7 and uh, 16. What does it say? Ka freyacho tau kwacho walacho. Ye shall know them by their fruits. From their fruits, right? From their fruits, tau quacho alacho, that you shall know them. Then they ask, then Yeshua asks us a question. You, but you have to understand in the Roman Church, you understand in the Roman Catholic Church practice, it was to strip the people of this. And this is why they had, you know, this is why the Protestant Reformation and, and the printing of the Bibles and all of this stuff, because the Romans wasn't doing that. And like now they give you literature and stuff like that, because now people can read. People have learned how to read on their own, no thanks to the so-called um, the apostate Roman mystery Babylon woman. She, she was not a very good mother. She was a mother of abominations. Now it says, Ka isho wine ka corinna chitis. Belles, uh, you like Amalin? You like Amalin? In other words, do men gather grapes of thorns? Do men gather grapes from thorns? I mean, do you go out there looking for thorns, and among thorns you want to find grapes or figs or thistles? Then it says, Indihu, and like this, Indihu, Melkam Zaf Hulu, Melkam Freya Dergan. So, even so, Every good tree, every Melkam Zaf, you understand? Melkam Zaf Hulu, all good trees bring forth good fruit. Melkam Frey Yadergal. Kufum Zaf, Kufu Frey Yadergal. It says, and a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. It's kind of interesting when you really start to study. You notice that in the first part, the ha part or the, or the a part, he uses. He uses all. He says all good trees bring forth or make good fruit. Then he says, um, and evil, kufu, kufum zaf, bring forth evil fruit, right? Kufu freya darga. He doesn't say all. Now, we say that because you might find some folks that was brought up Catholic, you know what I'm saying, or brought up in one of these denominations or whatever, and they might have learned something from it, and they might have learned in Christ to become good people, truly in Christ and through the power of Christ. You know what I'm saying? But it's interesting that it says this right here, that this is what we was meditating on before, you understand? Um, and then the whole section here is very interesting, too. This whole section that Christ is um, speaking on. And let's go to the head of it for a moment. Let's go to the head of the chapter. Now, here's what folks will say, but who are you to judge? Don't judge. And they'll say, see right there? It says, judge not that ye be not judged. And I for read the bachu, I do. In other words, 
so that you don't be condemned, don't judge. Yes, it says that. Be mita fer du bet fer ye fered da bachalina. Now notice it says, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. In other words, if you judge people a certain way, then don't get surprised that people judge you that way. And we're saying that judging them on what Christ has said, we don't mind being judged on what Christ has said. He is our master. You understand? He is Adonai. He is Getachins. Yes? What? You understand? It's the truth. Our all and our main. Here says the Mitta Sef Rubetim Mesferia Yisafer Rabachichwal. It says, and with what measure ye meet. In other words, how you measure things out, it shall be measured to you again. It shall be measured to you again. That's an interesting word, Sefer, right? Now, it's interesting because what Christ is teaching us here. Let's bring that back up, right? Christ is teaching us. He said, don't condemn. You see, you don't get this in the mistranslation. He said, so you don't be condemned, don't judge. And how you, how you judge against something, you understand, is the kind of judgment that will be judged against you. So how you condemn all the folks is how you're going to be condemned. So the Romans and the fascists, they condemned us as Ethiopians at home and abroad. And they've condemned us as black people for not even being human beings, not being a part of God's original creation or some beast or animals. And they still go on and do this, and some of you think it's a joke because you're weak, you're not in your proper person, so you laugh at these things, but the joke is on you. You understand? And so he says furthermore here, notice he says in verse 3, it says, Bewendemihim. You understand? And why do you behold? Why are you looking? You know what I'm saying? At that, at that, that piece of dirt, the gudif, right? That is in your brother's eye. You know? Oh, he got something in your eye, right? He says, but in your eye, your male eye, but oin again, yalowena misseso silamin ata malakatim. Or at melakatim, yeah, at melakatim. In other words, you are not looking, you're not paying attention, but you don't consider that you have a beam, like you know, like the beam that, like in some Ethiopian traditional homes, there's a mess, uh, misseso. It's like a, it's like a post, like a pillar in a sense. You understand that? You know, you have that in your eye. And so we say this because this is what these Catholics, the Catholicisms, and especially the Roman Catholics, and we notice in this whole entire article. Right? Even though His Majesty was very magnanimous, you understand, to Ethiopia's uh, traditional enemies. You understand? I mean, we look at the history of the Roman Catholic Church, and it's just mistaken, error, and no fruit of Christ. Very little. I mean, the Portuguese, when they came in, they were Catholic, but they were not Jesuits. They did good. You understand? Those who helped us with the Ahmed Garan and the Mohammedanism situation. You understand of the black Arabs being led by the pale red Arabs, the Ottoman Turks, which was kind of interesting that Turkey was behind that as well under the Ottomans. You understand? But then after that, the 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 Roman Catholic Church established an order. That's when the Jesuits were established after they saw the order of the Ethiopian establishment. The only thing we lacked was those modern weapons and arms that the that the Grain and the Mohammedans our terrorists from that time had because they were getting it from one of the most advanced uh, uh, empires of the time, and that was Turkey, the Ottoman Turks, which was trying to expand the Islamic Caliphate. Sound familiar with what's going on today? All right, so actually, you understand, actually the history of the Catholic Church in Ethiopia, you understand, um, Ethiopia is the one who's being very Christian. Even the emperor and imperial Ethiopia and allowing them with conditions, of course, with conditions to come and to evangelize in Ethiopia, especially among the non-Orthodox population, that of other groups. But we notice in this whole article, brothers and sisters, in this whole article, not one mention of Hala Selassie was, was mentioned in this. You understand of his magnanimousness. You understand? And even generously allowing them after such a tortured history where the Catholic Church, or at least those who would claim to be Roman Catholic like Mussolini, you understand, and his black shirts and the redhead fez kind of guys too, those, those Moorish sellouts, I'm talking about the ones over on that side, you understand, of the waters, 
which is a whole other story. So, being that as it is, I just wanted to point that I'm not one mention. You know, when you start to read these articles and you're like, wow, we can get a lot out of this. Give thanks for writing it. But, but, but you people are still up to your old tricks. So, in that point about judging or condemning, you know what I'm Christ is, is, is the head, not Peter. Christ is the head. And he's left us his word. So every church should be about disseminating faithfully his word, not tweaking it like the Roman Catholics and other denominations have done to favor them, you understand, for, the, for what the people possess, you know, like they want to get Ethiopia, they want to get the rich land, you know what I mean, they want to get the wealth. You understand? They want to bring in their corporations here. Once they get you caught up in their religion, it's like the Indians said. First, they give you their 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 Bible, their God, their interpretation. They take the land. You think it's any different in Ethiopia? You think it's any different there? When we really needed them, where were they? And when we really needed them, how did they respond? They helped us out a little bit, and then once the church, the Catholic Church and the Jesuits got involved, they caused massive bloodshed. And that's a sign of who they are. You know, when you look at the real history of the Roman Catholic Church in Ethiopia, now this doesn't mean that if one is Roman Catholic today, they are subjected to, you know, repeating. They can learn from the past, but it's when they deny it. You know, it's when they deny it. You know, like Mussolini said, he want to civilize us. What does Christ says? Unto gibbers, thou hypocrite. Ask edmet ka'oyne, misasowin auta. It says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. This is, this is very interesting right here, because they, they were talking about, oh, Ethiopians are uncivilized, Ethiopians are this and that, and they, they always use this. Like they're doing now, showing you these sad stories of Africa, so forth and so on, you understand, while still trying to use divide and conquer and make blacks think like over here that they have no stake in Africa while they're trying to get their corporations to invest in them. You dumb Negroes are acting like, I know African, and now you can't find a job because now the job has gone to Africa or Asia or somewhere else, and they're selling you back the product that you don't have no money. You don't own no land walking around with white man's name, not in your proper person before law. You can't even defend yourself. You got to get a you got to get a court appointed attorney because you're using their European names. Now, this is a key verse here, right? As well, where it says, "Give not that which is holy to the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine." Least they trample them under their feet and turn again and rent you and split you and divide and conquer you. A lot of the problems that Africa is having, and particularly Ethiopia, is because of this ongoing war. Where did the war begin? It began in Genesis. It began in Genesis. Remember those two seeds? Those two women? Obviously, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. It's obviously putting it on some sort of equal footing. That's two churches there. Two different churches, the Igracho and Dai Regatut, Kamelusawim and Dai Nekasu Achu. You take Edesawin Low Lewishoch, Atistu. In the Kuochacho Hunim, the Eria Watch Feet, Atitalu, Give not that which is holy. That which is holy to dogs. That means we have to learn some, some um, um, discernment. You know, in all your prayer, pray, pray for knowledge, wisdom, discernment, understanding. These things you have to pray for. You can't expect us to get this just by reading and studying. You have to also ask God, you understand, in the name of Yeshua to open up, you understand, a lot of your latent attributes that have been suppressed you understand, when you were lost, when you still was not in your proper person, when you was out of your mind, right? He says, Lemnu, right? Lemnu, ask. You said, Achuhu mal, and it shall be given you. Felugu, right? Tagenu malachu. You're saying, seek, seek, search it out. Seek it, 
Search it out, and ye shall find. You can't be lazy like, oh, it's going to come to me. No, no. Mezgian anakwaku. Mezgian, or the, that which is locked like the, it, it, says, it, says, it says here, it says knock, but knock on like the locked gate. There's a locked gate. Mezgian, right? Anakwaku. Knock, right? And it shall be yekafet alachuhumal. And it shall be opened, right? It shall be opened to you. This is both spiritual advice. You know, this is, this is, this is what individual responsibility, brothers and sisters, we all, all of us, I and I especially, you know, because to whom more is given, more is required, you understand. And, um, you know, there are forces that don't want you to know these things. So you have to recognize they, they want to kill the messenger, you understand? But we trust in the King of Kings and his Christ. And I and I have overcome because it is written, you understand? And that's what we build our faith on that. For everyone that asks if Kabbalah is it. Everyone who, so, so this, this, this Kabbalah, this overstanding, Lemnu. Notice he says, Yemi alemno, hulu yikabalalina, yikabalalina, kabele, kabbalah. And he that, what? Seeketh, findeth, Yemi fella goim, yagenya. Right? And to him that knocketh, he or she that knocketh, it shall be open. Mezgianema, yamiana, kwa kwa, yikafeta letal. Right? It will be open to us. You know what I'm saying? It will be open to us. So all this kind of like, um, you know, we hear these stories about, oh, they've taken our land, Grant. We don't have our land no more. There's no more land. you got to remember the lying, false, what they call them, the, the scouts. Remember those lying scouts, the ten of them, that, that caused the whole people to wander in the wilderness? Think about it, brothers and sisters. There was only two of them that said, we can take it now. You know what I'm saying? We can take this now with John. John will help us to take this because it's ours. He's given it to us. It's whether we choose to um, work out our faith or say, well, we believe it, we have faith in it, but we don't do it. Now, here's a particular section here, which I know this is very interesting right here, just getting back to this. In this column right here, this is the Goodness column of that passage. It's called, it's on the article um, Hamsa Arat, or 54, 54. Like I said, this is the Goodness of what we had just read a little bit earlier. And on this side, this is the Amharic. Now, it's very important to understand this. Now, first of all, we point out that uh, it does say Rome here, or the seat, right? The seat right here, you understand? The seat of, 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 of Rome, of Romia. But you have to understand that Rome in classical times was Byzantium, you understand? Or Constantinople, which is today modern day Istanbul. If you hear about Istanbul, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about Rome. You understand? Italy. We're not talking about Italy. Now, you have to understand when this was written. But then we notice over here that it doesn't mention, which is the Amharic of His Majesty, it doesn't mention that. Then we thought about this. We said, wait, doesn't the Bible say when a child is a child, while they're still a child, even though they are heir and lord of all, you understand, that they cannot come into that inheritance? I think it's Gal was it Gal Galatians. They cannot come into that inheritance, you understand, until they grow up. You understand? But then when they grow up, they can come and claim the inheritance. You recall that his imperial majesty, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, that he is the one that um, brought the Ethiopian church out of Egypt. He's the one who brought, you understand, the Beta Israel out of Egypt in this modern time with that autocephaly after 1,600 years no longer under Egypt or the Egyptian church, and look what's going on in Egypt. Can't you say hallelujah? You know what I'm saying? Can't you, can't you be thankful and grateful? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the Ethiopians know this, but they need to pray that, that God takes that monophic, the monophic out of their heart for Haile Selassie. 
because it's, it's, it's not going to get them into the kingdom because it's a lie. You know what I'm saying? It's a lie. So it's interesting that, that we have this right here in the scripture where it is saying that when the child is a child, you know what I'm saying, while the child is still a child, they are under tutors, right? They are under tutors. They are under guardians, you know what I'm saying, until they grow up, until that particular seed grows up. And it's very, very interesting when you look into, as a reference, put Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 4. Study Galatians chapter 3 and chapter 4 because it's very interesting because the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. See, the law, studying Torah and studying even the Fitta Neges, the law, because it refers much to Torah, much to the scriptures and, and, and its references, the law is our schoolmaster. This is our nanny, so to speak. And it brings us to Christ, to the Moshiach, to that maturity, that we might now be justified, made right, you understand, know by our faith. And we'll be strong in faith. But after that faith has come. Once we now are walking out in the faith, we are no longer under the law. We're no longer under the schoolmaster. You know what I'm saying? And even in that sense, as a church, we're no longer under, you know what I'm saying, whether the, the, the patriarch of Alexandria, you know what I'm saying, and especially not under apostate Rome. Yes, and because we have to make arguments about this whole situation concerning the whole the Catholic, because they're, they're still at it. They, you know, they, they switched it up. You know, they've been making the same argument in different ways over the years. They're not making it exactly the same way they made it before, but basically, it's very much it's very much similar. So we are under, you understand? We are under the law until we grow up, until we can become responsible. You understand? Until we can become in 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 laws, you understand, and not to go about it as outlaws. You understand? So it's very, very important to understand this for ye are all, it says the children of God by faith in Christos Iesus. You understand? We are all, as it says right here, bring this up, you understand, we are all children of God. Right? We are all children of Abba. We are all children of Abba Caduce, right, by faith in Christos Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christos, the Moshiach, have put on the Moshiach. You know what I'm saying? So it's very interesting because in verse 1 of chapter 4 it says, Now I say that the ear, the one who is ear, and we're saying that Ethiopia is that ear. You understand? That inheritor, as long as he is a child, as long as the ear is a lidge, right, differeth nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord, though he be Adonai, though he be Geta, though he be Kurios, over all. So are you seeing, are you understanding this connection right here about the patriarch? is like a father. In a sense, it's almost like a stepfather. On a certain level, he's a, he's a father, a stepfather as we step a step up to God until we can recognize what is our responsibility. This is why the church is so weak today, because nobody knows nothing. Well, i got to ask my pastor. You understand? Can't you read the Bible? What do you have faith? Well, my pastor, no. You understand? But he is under tutors and governors, right, under tutors and governors until the time appointed, get this, Galatians chapter 4, verse 2, verse, verse, chapter 4, verse 2, but it's under tutors and governors, and that word tutor is linked to comforter as well, tutor, right, and governors until the time appointed of the Abba, until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, even so are we, my brothers and sisters, I and I and I, we as Ethiopian Hebrews, and this is speaking to our birthright. You understand? Our birthright. You understand? Rastafari is our faith. Understand the difference between Ethiopian Hebrew as our birthright. Because I used to that sister and brothers out there on the West Coast, when you look at the Constitution,